After crossing the border in mid-August, the Second Army, composed of five corps, fought the German 20th Corps under Friedrich von Scholz. Samsonov's goal was to reach Vistula instead of helping the First Army under Rennenkamp, who was advancing at a slow pace. But later, three new German corps arrived. Hindenburg and Ludendorff were now commanding the 8th Army. After crucial fighting, Samsonov's army was encircled and virtually annihilated, but Rennenkamp was still in East Prussia and the 10th Army was coming to his aid. According to Prit Butha, as the magnitude of the disaster that had befallen Samsonov's army became clear, Renenkamp ordered his men to pull back from their most advanced positions. First Army took up a line running from the Dion Valley in the north, through Wellau and Nordenburg, to the northern shore of the MAUSC, immediately to the west of Angerberg. His reserve division formed the new 26th Corps. On his northern flank, between Wellau and Nordenburg were his 3rd and 4th Corps. The 2nd Corps was placed opposite the German garrison in Lotzen. In addition, Renenkamp received five newly formed reserve divisions 54th, 57th, 68th, 72nd, 76th. The total strength of the 1st Army was more than 300,000 men, including 50,000 in reserve garrisons of fortresses in the rear of the 1st Army. The 10th Army filled the gap with what was left of the 2nd Army. The 10th Army was newly formed and consisted of the 23rd Corps from Finland, the 3rd Siberian Corps, the 1st Tukistan Corps, and the 2nd Caucasian Corps, with the 22nd Corps opposite Lick and the 3rd Siberian Corps to their south. Two corps were kept in reserve. The total strength of the 10th Army was 250,000 men. In the reserve of the 10th Army, there were garrisons of fortresses with more than 37,000 men. On 31 August, Hindenburg received the following orders, 11th Corps, Guards Reserve Corps, and 8th Cavalry Division are placed at your disposal. Their transport has begun. The first task of 8th Army is to clear East Prussia of Ronenkamp's army. When the situation in East Prussia has been restored, you are to contemplate employing 8th Army in the direction of Warsaw. Hindenburg and Ludendorff place their guards reserve corps, 1st Reserve Corps, 11th Corps and the 20th Corps on the Russian northern flank. Their 17th Corps was deployed at Lotzen and their first corps around Lick. The total strength of the 8th Army was 244,391 men, including troops against the 2nd Russian Army. During September 2nd and 3, the Russian cavalry occupied Kaledin and Shalekin and faced the German infantry across the Dion River. The Russian 3rd Army Corps repulsed all German attacks at Levenhagen and was preparing for pursuit by the forces of the 1st Guards Cavalry Division. The Russian 4th Army Corps at Grosswolfstorf repulsed the attacks of the German 1st Reserve Division and occupied Friedland with the forces of the 40th Infantry Division. But on the left flank of the 1st Russian Army, the situation worsened. On the side of the 2nd Army Corps, the German 20th Army Corps occupied Rastenburg and Baden. The Russian 2nd Guards Cavalry Division retreated from Drenkfurth. The 1st Cavalry Division of Vasily Gurko, advancing on Allenstein, was met by fire from the German 147th Infantry Regiment and two squadrons of the 11th Dragoon Regiment. Having lost five officers and 15 soldiers, Gurko was able to knock the Germans out of position, but could not withstand the counterattack of the Cavalry Brigade and retreated in battle to Krolikin. By September 7 and 8, the command of the 8th German Army unhinderedly concentrated shock groups in front of the positions of the 1st Army and the intensification of operations east of Konigsberg disoriented Russian intelligence. The Guards Reserve caused three road guards, 1st Guards Reserve Divisions. Commander General of Artillery Max von Gorwitz took over the site near Allenberg and the 11th Army caused 22nd, 38th Infantry Divisions. Commander General of Infantry Otto von Plusko took over the site near Nordenburg. The concentration and offensive of the Russian 22nd Army Corps, the vanguard of the Russian 10th Army at first, did not meet with Germans' opposition, but on September 7, the German offensive began against the 10th Russian Army. The German 3rd Reserve Division, after a two hour artillery preparation, captured the city of Biala capturing 400 prisoners and eight guns from the detachment of Lieutenant General Stanislav Stelnitsky 1st, 2nd, 
4th and 12th Finnish Rifle Regiments. The next day, the Kurt von Morgen Group broke through the Russian defences and entered the operational space. To counter the enemy offensive, the 2nd and 4th Finnish Rifle Brigades were sent to lick the 10th Finnish Rifle Regiment to Ares and the 27th Siberian Rifle Regiment to Grajwu. The 8th Siberian Rifle Division of the arriving 3rd Siberian Army Corps was supposed to go to the rear of the Germans. The German 1st Army Corps advanced on Widmanen, where the 1st Infantry Division took up to 1,000 prisoners. Another 1,000 defenders parts of the 43rd Infantry Division and the 3rd Finnish Rifle Brigade lost killed and wounded. The commander of the 10th Russian Army, Infantry General Vasily Flug, ordered the 22nd Army and 3rd Siberian Corps 97,080 for men, 192 machine guns, 240 guns to go on the offensive on Johannesburg. But on the night of September 8, the German 3rd Reserve Division attacked the junction of the 1st and 10th Armies near the city Lick. The 22nd Army Corps left the city by the morning of September 9, having lost 96 killed. 493 wounded and 350 missing. The 36th Reserve Division released Lotzen, capturing 1,000 prisoners and 16 guns. The 43rd Infantry Division and the 3rd Finnish Rifle Brigade retreated under the onslaught of the Germans from Maurice. The commander of the Russian 22nd Corps, von Brinken, considered it necessary to withdraw troops to the defensive line, but the commander of the 10th Army forbade the retreat and ordered at all costs to strike and assist the 1st Army. Von Brinken objected, the continuation of the battle would lead to a complete loss of combat capability and no assistance would be provided. He proposed to withdraw the vanguards of the army to Augusto, concentrate there, arrange the rear and organize supplies, and then go on the offensive with a single fist. After negotiations with the headquarters of the armies of the Northwestern Front, Flug allowed to withdraw to Augusto. On September 9, the Guards Reserve Corps of Artillery General von Gorlwitz went on the offensive against the center of the 1st Russian Army near Allenburg. His 3rd and 1st Reserve Guards Division started a battle at the crossings across the Elbe River, and here they encountered stubborn resistance from the Russian 3rd and 20th Army Corps, reinforced by the 54th and 72nd Infantry Divisions. With great difficulty, with the support of the Landwehr from the Fortress of Posen Division of Lieutenant General Anatol Graf von Bredo, they managed to gain a foothold at Redden and Schillen. The Russian artillery inflicted especially great damage on the attackers. Von Gorwitz ordered at night the artillery brigades to get as close as possible to the Russian positions in order to open fire at close range in the morning and suppress the Russian batteries. From Posen, heavy artillery arrived in the corps under the command of Lieutenant General Gerica. The situation on the left flank of the 1st Army was becoming threatening. The distracting group of Morgan wedged into the location of the Russian troops and created a threat of encirclement in front of the rivers in Strach and Anjurap. The Russians took urgent measures to strengthen the flank and to gradually withdraw troops from under the blow of the Germans to the Anjurap River. By the evening of September 9th, a grouping of troops was assembled to launch a counterattack on the flank of the corps of Hermann von Francois and Morgan. For this, nine Russian divisions were concentrated in the Goldap area, the 2nd and 20th Army Corps, the Gurkho Cavalry Detachment and the 54th, 57th and 76th Infantry Divisions. Renan Camp ordered to shoot anyone who left the trenches without an order. He also turned to the headquarters of the armies of the Northwestern Front with a request to support his actions. With the offensive of the 10th Army, but the Quartermaster General of the headquarters, Major General Leontiev, stated that the corps have not yet been arranged. At the same time, during the day, the Guards Reserve Corps was able to build five bridges on the Al River on both sides of Allenburg. To parry a possible Russian counterattack and German reconnaissance established the arrival of two divisions. Bredo's Landwehr Division was advanced to the threatened direction, and to the south of Tapiu, a detachment of Wolgemut from the garrison of Koenigsberg, five battalions and two squadrons with strong artillery. Renenkamp did not lose hope of repelling the blow of the German army. He instructs the Husen Karnikchevinsky to move to Goldap and delay the advance of the Germans. The Rorch Division is directed to Bankheim and Magurbo, the detachment of Lieutenant General Anatoly Rosenshield, 54th and 28th Infantry Divisions to Trempen and Kiselin, the 29th Infantry Division to Darkamen. 
The defense of the Diem River was entrusted to the newly formed 26th Army because of Infantry General Alexandre Jerngros, 53 Road and 56th Infantry Divisions, 73rd Artillery Brigade. Throughout the day on September 9th, units of the Russian 3rd Army Corps held back the Germans at Allenburg and the 4th Army Corps at Bavian, but in the 2nd Army Corps, the Germans occupied Widmanen, went to Lake Gablik, where they were stopped by the 1st Cavalry Division. Entering the battle, in the battles, the Russian 302nd Sarash Infantry Regiment was defeated. The commander of the 1st Brigade of the 26th Infantry Division, Major General Druzhinin, was killed. At Kutin, the Russian 72nd Infantry Division was brought into battle. Renenkamp also counted on a powerful blow with three corps in the direction of Malorkin, Werbon, Norkidin, Nordenburg in the center and northern flank of the Germans. On September 7, the Russian 2nd Army launched a diversionary attack on Masiniek and captured the city by the night of September 10. The cavalry drove out the enemy's vanguards from Friedrichshof. These attacks were carried out by a few detachments, since the army had not yet recovered from the defeat. The attack on Mlawa was not successful, but by the morning of September 13, Jano was taken. During this time, 17 prisoners were captured. Russian losses were 22 killed, 120 wounded and 19 missing. The main result of the actions of the 2nd Army during this period was that the German 8th Army was deprived of the opportunity to reinforce the troops against the 1st Army at the expense of its southern group. Only on the orders of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief did the 2nd Army begin to retreat to its original positions, since the headquarters of the Front Armies feared a breakthrough here too. On September 10, the shock group of the 1st Army launched an offensive from the Godap area, but was met by hurricane artillery and machine gun fire, first at the attacking chains and then at the Russian positions. Taking advantage of the confusion, the 1st German Reserve Corps captured Goldap on the move, taking 1,000 prisoners and 32 guns in the city and then advanced to Insterberg. Having lost a springboard for regrouping, the Russian 2nd Army Corps retreated. His 43rd Infantry Division suffered heavy casualties. In the companies of the 26th Infantry Division, 5 to 10 men remained at lost more than 4,000 men. Renenkamp was furious at the failure of the counterattack. He demanded from the commander of the 20th Corps, General of Infantry Smyrnov, the most energetic actions to support the 2nd Army Corps. Using the success of the 1st Army Corps and 1st Reserve Corps, the divisions of the Guards Reserve Corps crossed the Al and Omet rivers and began the pursuit to Velo. On September 10, the headquarters of the 22nd Army Corps moved to Augusto. Four brigades of the Corps, united in the detachments of Stelnitsky and Lieutenant General Vladimir von Notbeck, retreated to Kalinoen and Lake Skumenten. The German regiments of the 1st Army Corps at that time launched an offensive against the flank of the Russian 2nd Army Corps. The 44th Infantry Regiment of the 2nd Infantry Division occupied Gross Pilikin and Gross Jakunovan, capturing 657 Russian prisoners including 7 officers and 8 guns. The 3rd Reserve Division entered Lick. The combined cavalry corps of Lieutenant General Hermann Bernhard Brecht 1 Saint and 8th Cavalry Divisions moved into the gap between the flanks of the 1st and 10th Russian armies. By evening, the German cavalry reached Kavalin, intercepting the retreat routes of the 1st Army. The German 1st and 17th Army Corps were involved in the battle for Goldap, and the 3rd Reserve Division and the 1st Cavalry Brigade defended Lick against the troops of the Russian 10th Army. The Russian 20th Army Corps, reinforced by the 54th, 57th and 72nd Infantry Divisions, suffered huge losses over 16,000 men, not counting the completely destroyed 72nd Division, but did not allow the Germans to enter the Russian rear. The divisions of the 3rd and 4th Army Corps defended steadfastly at the turn of the Omet and Anjarap rivers. Their resistance did not allow the collapse of the right flank of the 1st Russian Army and created an opportunity for the transfer of two divisions of the 20th Army Corps and then the cavalry corps of Karnakachevan to the breakthrough side of Brecht's German cavalry. Only on the night of September 12th did the Russian 40th Infantry Division retreat across the Anjarap River and destroy the bridges behind them. Her losses exceeded 1,600 men. Until the evening of September 11, 
The Guards and the 1st Reserve and the 11th Army Corps and 20th Army because of the Germans could not move forward against these forces. Nevertheless, the results of the battle on September 10th were depressing for Renenkamp. By midnight, the 2nd Army because retreated across the Gadapa River, the counterattacks of the 20th Army because were repulsed. The Germans with the forces of the 1st Reserve Corps pursued the Free Drixwald. The Guards Reserve Corps occupied Neumel, Hohendamero, the Wolgemut Detachment Wellau. Considering the growing threat of covering the left flank of the army, Renenkamp ordered on the night of September 11th to begin a withdrawal. The commander of the 10th Army, General of Artillery Vasily Flug, on the morning of September 11th, attacked Lick with the 3rd Siberian Army Corps 7th and 8th Siberian Rifle Divisions and the 22nd Army Corps. The 3rd Siberian Army Corps persistently attacked Lick until the morning of September 12, and although the city was never taken, the German command attracted the Landwehr Division of von Diergoltz from the Nehru direction to defend it. The 3rd Reserve Division was unable to reinforce the bypass group, which crashed south of Goldap into the flank of the 1st Army. But the detachments of Stelnitsky and Notbeck, who received the task of hitting the rear of the Germans at Magrabowa and Vielitskin, were just deploying. In total, the 10th Army lost 343 killed, 1,105 wounded and 451 missing in these battles and captured four wounded German soldiers. On September 11th, German corps began pursuing the retreating Russian corps of the 1st Army. The Guards Reserve Corps crossed the Pregolaya River and reached Norkidden. The 1st Reserve Corps entrenched itself in Insterberg. The 1st Army Corps in Romanton Forest, the 17th and 20th Army Corps reached Nemersdorf. The 9th Landwehr Brigade successfully advanced to Tilsit, bypassing the right flank of the Russians. The stubborn resistance of the troops of the 1st Army led, however, to significant fatigue of the Russian troops and to a temporary loss of control over them. There were also extremely heavy losses. In a few days, the 1st Army lost 3,603 killed, 13,200 to wounded, 40 for missing. The 2nd and 20th Army Corps retreated with a battle for Gawaiden and Gross Sobrost. The 2nd Guards Cavalry Division, after a stubborn battle at Kavalin, retreated to Tolminkmen. The 1st and 2nd Guards Cavalry Divisions retreated to Gherkin. The retreat of the 1st Army soon took on the character of flight. In previous battles, the Germans managed to create a threat of encirclement of the left flank with a blow from the Raminka Forest to the north with cutting off the massive von Ronenkamp's troops on the Andrap River. This caused the haste of the withdrawal of three corps, the mixing of troops, and the loss of communications. On September 13th, Renenkamp, who retreated with their headquarters and command of the army in Kovna, lost command of the troops and restored communication only by the night of September 14th. The loss of communication was caused primarily by panic in the immediate rear. The army was served by large telegraph and telephone centers in Suwalki, Augusto and Sejny. At the first news of the retreat of the army on September 12th, the civil administration abandoned their posts and fled, cutting telegraph and telephone lines. Therefore, the blame for the loss of command and control lies to a large extent on the civilian department. On September 12, the 20th Russian Army has retreated to the Trikanantolminka Heine line, continually coming under fire from German artillery. On September 14 to 16, the divisions of the corps retreated successively to Marijampol, Lyudvinovo and Simnas. The troops suffered heavy losses during the withdrawal. As a result, the 54th Infantry Division was disbanded. By September 19, the 28th and 29th Infantry Divisions were entrenched in positions near Alidus. On September 12, the divisions of the 26th Army Corps took up a position at Kusin Katanau, keeping in touch with the 3rd Army Corps and preparing to repulse the advancing Germans. The 53rd and 56th Divisions and the 5th Rifle Brigade fought a stubborn battle until late in the evening, when the 3rd Corps had already retreated to Vilkaviskis. By nightfall, the Corps broke away from the Germans and withdrew to Savinta River and Vladislavov. On September 13, the 53rd and 56th Divisions withdrew to Sikiri. 
The 53rd and 56th Divisions were withdrawn from the corps to the reserve of the 1st Army, and in return the 57th and 64th Infantry Divisions were subordinated. The 9th Landwehr Brigade of Lieutenant General Hermann Clausius advanced on Tilsit. On this site there was a detachment of Major General V. Mum 1 Saint Brigade of the 68th Infantry Division and 1st Division of the 68th Artillery Brigade and the 6th Torridge and Border Guard Brigade. The flanks of the detachment were provided by the 1st Separate Cavalry Brigade and the 53rd Infantry Division at Labiau. From the evening of September 11, the Germans pressed the border guards from Kavalin to the Alexandrovskoy. By the morning of September 12, the Germans made their way to the bridges on the Niemen and by noon completely surrounded the city. From 15 o'clock the bombardment began, the cavalry retreated to Kovna. In Tilsit, an uprising of the population began. Retreating Russian troops were shot from the windows of houses. The 270th Gatchina Infantry Regiment was surrounded and while trying to break through, lost its commander Colonel Volkov was captured, almost all the officers and 3,000 soldiers. Eight machine guns, 16 guns were lost, and General Mum was also captured. The remnants of the detachment's eight officers and 869 soldiers retreated to Shavli. The 22nd Army Corps was ordered to go on the offensive to rescue the 1st Army, hitting the rear of the Germans. The attack was scheduled for noon, but the Commander-in-Chief of the Armies of the Northwestern Front, Cavalry General Yakov Jelinski, categorically forbade the attack. After the Germans occupied Sawalki on September 14, the brigades of the Corps were assigned to Lipsk, Staben. On September 16, the Germans knocked down the Corps from the Augusto position and occupied it. The Corps managed to gain a foothold at the crossings near Lipsk and Sapotskin and received the task of defending the paths to Grodna. The soldiers pursued by the Germans, deprived of leadership, lacking not only ammunition, but also provisions, began to surrender en masse. The panic began. The Germans captured 12,000 men and 80 guns. By September 14, East Prussia was cleared of Russian troops, they continued to retreat across the Niemen River. On September 14 and 15, the German vanguard captured Mariampol, Sawalki, Vladislavov and Pulviskyaya. An attempt to stop the Germans at Mariampol by the forces of the Russian 4th Army Corps failed. He retreated, losing 52 killed, 163 wounded, 83 missing. On September 15, the German 3rd Reserve Division captured the city of Augusto, left by the 22nd Army because of the 10th Army. Nevertheless, Renenkamp managed to restore control of the troops, withdrawing the army beyond the Niemen from Alida to Kovna. He escaped encirclement, although the Russian troops were defeated. The pursuing German cavalry also suffered significant losses. So, in the battles of September 10 and 14, the Saxon cavalry regiments of the 8th Division lost nine officers killed, including the commander of the Horse Guards Regiment, Major Grafen and 29 soldiers, eight officers and 53 soldiers wounded, two missing and one soldier capture. Casualties of the 1st Army at the First Battle of the Masurian Lakes were estimated by the staff of the Russian Northwestern Front at 100,000 men of which up to 50% were prisoners, 122 machine guns and 150 guns. For the entire East Prussian campaign, according to the lists of regiments and reports of the commanders of divisions and brigades, 1st Army, 275 officers and 9,347 soldiers were killed, 557 officers and 25,616 soldiers were wounded, 449 officers and 65,608 soldiers were missing. In total 1,826 officers and 115,370 for soldiers including without indication casualty categories 545 officers and 14,219 soldiers of the 54th and 72nd Infantry Divisions. Due to the defeat of a number of headquarters and the loss of documents, the casualties of almost the entire 54th Infantry Division remain unexplained. As of September 18, 1914, 284 officers, 11,810 soldiers, 24 machine guns, 19 guns were missing in the division. It was disbanded and partially also the disbanded 72nd Infantry Division and the 76th Artillery Brigade. Lost without categorization only 25 officers, 1,100 soldiers, 40 guns. 
First Battle of the Masurian Lakes was the development and continuation of the plan of the command of the 8th German Army to destroy the Russian armies invading East Prussia. Hindenburg and Ludendorff decided to repeat the encirclement operation, organizing a powerful strike at the junction of the 1st and 10th Russian armies with access to the rear of the 1st. The 8th German Army lost for the whole of September 1914 1,555 dead, 10,412 wounded and 1,552 missing. More than 30,000 Russian prisoners and 150 guns were announced to have been captured. In the battles of September 7th to 15, emphasis was placed on the qualitative superiority of the German troops in artillery on maneuvering with fire. The Russian troops were not ready for this, and their defense could not withstand the long artillery preparations that had not been used before. Nevertheless, the First Army was not surrounded. The firmness of the defense on the Anjurap River made it possible to fend off the maneuver of the German cavalry and prevent it from destroying the headquarters and rear of the army. However, the actions of Renenkamp were dissatisfied. Vasily Flug angrily wrote to the Chief of Staff of the Armies of the Northwestern Front, Vasily Oronofsky, the catastrophe with Sam Sornov made such a deep impression that we want to avoid any action involving even the smallest risk, forgetting that there is no victory without risk. To justify our indecision, we put forward the colossal numbers of troops that the enemy allegedly has. The Germans seem to us ubiquitous. Having lost 321 officers, 14,585 soldiers, 31 machine guns, 30 guns, the 72nd Infantry Division was disbanded, its commander, Major General Orloff, was transferred to the reserve ranks. Head of the 30th Infantry Division, Lieutenant General Edward Kolyankovsky, Commander of the 28th Artillery Brigade, Major General Malio. Head of the 1st Separate Cavalry Brigade, Major General Oronofsky. Commanders of the 110th, 112th, 113th, 117th, 169th, 223rd, 287th, 288th Infantry, 16th Yakutsk Hussars, 34th Don Cossack regiments were removed from their posts. The rule of the Russian occupation authorities in East Prussia caused great damage to the province. The victims of the Russian troops were 19,000 civilians, of which 1,620 died including those who were shot without trial, 433 were wounded and 10,000 were driven to Russia. 33,553 houses were destroyed or partially destroyed, 100,000 people were left homeless and without property. A third of the population of the province 800,000 people became refugees. 20 for cities, 572 villages, 236 estates were destroyed. Russian troops stole 135,000 horses, 250,000 cattle later 20,000 horses and 86,000 cattle were recaptured, and 200,000 pigs. The robbery was led by the military department, which created a special commission on the basis of the commissariat of the Dvina military district. All the confiscated property was brought to Vilna, where the applications of interested parties for a share of the loot were sent. Agricultural machinery and implements, machine tools, personal items, clothes, underwear and footwear including women's and children's furniture, sanitary wear bathtubs, toilet bowls, watches, cutlery were subject to confiscation. In total, the list, compiled later for the Chief of Staff of the Dvina Military District, includes 697 positions of various items regardless of their number in each item. These consequences of the war, characteristic however, for each of the fighting armies contributed to the bitterness of the struggle. At the end of 1914 in Germany, Russian generals taken prisoner were brought to trial for crimes against civilians. The court acquitted them as they carried out the orders of their superiors. Almost immediately after the liberation of the province, Emperor Wilhelm II arrived in East Prussia. He visited lots and other cities, was in the immediate rear of the 8th Army. On October 7, 15 million marks were allocated for the restoration of the province. On 11 September, Grand Duke Nikolai dismissed Yakov Zelensky as the commander of the Russian Northwestern Front, replacing him with Nikolai Ruzki. The Grand Duke then ordered the 5th Army from Galicia to a position north of Warsaw. 
On 14 September, the last of the Russian army had retreated over the frontier as the German 1st Infantry Division reached Velkovishki within Russian territory and the German 3rd Reserve Infantry Division had reached Savalki. On 15 September, the Germans formed the 9th Army to protect Silesia. The German advantage was bought at a cost, the newly arrived corps had been sent from the Western Front and their absence would be felt in the upcoming Battle of the Marne. Much of the territory taken by the Germans would later be lost to a Russian counterattack during 25 to 28 September. 